Hi guys and welcome back to another dinosaur review. Now this time it's of a dinosaur I've been waiting to see, expecting that Collecte would be Johnny on the spot again, the basil and chylosaur Sagoros. Now this dinosaur from Chile was described just last year. Now strictly speaking, Wonder Artistic models, proudly Chilean as they are, offered the first representation in this wonderful wood kit. However, no mass-produced model has shown up, so Collecte could still be the first there. Now while waiting for that to happen, I have this. Now there are quite a few Chinese studios I've been interested in over the years, and Sunsun has been one of them. I just needed the right dinosaur at an affordable price, and when the release images of this new dinosaur popped up on the Chinese forums, I decided that this was it. Now there are two versions, the painted and the unpainted kits, and since I can't paint to save my life, I got the painted one. Now Stegouros was estimated to be 1.8 meters or 6 feet long, so a very small ankylosaur indeed. These models average out to about 8.5 centimeters or 3.3 inches, and that makes the scale 1 to 21, very close to the stated 1 to 20 scale. Segoros is a basal ankylosaurian, and you can certainly see it doesn't have the typical ankylosaurid form. Now, starting with this guy, a write off comparing to the skeletal, you can see the proportions are very close. There's a long neck and a relatively large head, and the jaggedness here in the profile is as you might expect. The texture and detail are very pleasing, from the caputaguli in the head, uh, which are speculative, the clear delineations uh, thanks to the colour contrast, the very small and shiny eyes, the little jugal osteoderm, then moving down the back. And there are no cervical half rings like we see in Ankylosaurus, which is correct. There are these larger scutes down the back. And in between, uh, look at the small scutes here that are in a tight fitting mosaic. Now the colour from the release images seemed rather simple to me, based in browns, and is possibly inspired by the original illustration that accompanied the announcement. But in hand, it's rather more complex than I expected. Now we can see the really nice smooth colour transition in the sides. And then darker again into the legs and feet. Darker skews are interspersed among the lighter ones, yet very naturalistic in appearance. Just such a really pleasing blend. And these larger skews also have a complexity of colour and texture to them. The hands have the correct number of digits, with digits 4 and 5 being unclawed, which is a reasonable assumption. And likewise, the feet have the correct number of digits, with digit 1 being a dew claw. Now at the terminal end, we have of course their tail. This is one of the most unique aspects of this animal, and its distinctiveness is very nicely expressed. Very detailed, very nicely painted, with colour variation and fade. You can see why the authors describe the tail as frond-like. You can also see the resemblance to the Aztec Makwawit weapon, which is a wooden pebble inset with obsidian blades, a very nasty weapon indeed. Now continuing to the underside, you can clearly see against the light colour the very intricate sculpting of the tiny scales. The subtle folds of skin and the cloaca. 
And again, look here in the tail. Really nice detail here. Um, on the right, uh, sorry, the left hand, there's a peg that goes into the base. Now I like that it's not so large as to prevent it leveling, even if you chose to stand him without the base. Now this guy is chewing on a leaf, uh, which has a very realistic droop, which hints at a firm pliability. And you can also see the texture and colour blend. As for the other one, I need just give you a once-over. Uh, from the head. I'm noting again the detail in the caputagulae. The beak. The jugal horn. Then over the armour as we've seen in the other one. All the way down to the tail. And likewise the transitions to the underside. And then the underside itself with all that neat detail. The hand here also has a very shallow peg that doesn't interfere with independent standing. A nice point is that there are actual differences to indicate two separate individuals. Uh, for example, the mottling here in the leaf guy is a lot more obvious than this one, which you can hardly see. And similarly, on the underside, the colours are of different shades. As for the base, I'm very happy with it. Now many dioramas have bases that are visibly lower in quality than the animals, but not so here. You see these leaves here, uh, which are striated with a realistic texture, as well as the subtle shading of the greens. And even these spots of rot, which pretty much looks like any plant entrusted to my care after a week or so. The rocky surface is believably painted in a matte brown-grey. But here you see a kind of gum that's been used to depict a narrow stream of water. then continues down here and then dashing some of this slope to convey the idea of wetness. Uh, this slope itself looks rather muddy. So this really sells the whole diorama. The pegs here fit rather loosely into the corresponding indentations, but enough to prevent them from moving. Finally, let's compare these little guys with some ankylosaur models you may be familiar with. Of course, this is 1 to 20, but I don't mind because given how small these dinosaurs are, a 1 to 35 will lose a lot of detail. So first, the Collecte Borealopelta. The Pianesso Pinacosaurus.
the PNSO Sarapelta. And for larger models, the Safari Limited and Kylosaurus. And the PNSO and Kylosaurus. And so that's it for the Sensen Stegouros. You never know when you buy a model from a studio you've never bought from what the quality is going to be, and I'm delighted that this delivered. I'm very happy to get this unusual dinosaur from them because uh, the others they offer are really too expensive with uninspiring colour schemes and of genera that I already have or am not interested in. Now this dinosaur is small and cute, yet not skimping in detail, sculpt, paint application and accuracy. The base is equally fantastic and on par with the animals and that makes dioramas like this a little prize to have indeed. So you let me know what you guys think and I'll see you for another review.